Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at our first ever menu screenshot of Final Fantasy 16. It's crazy to think that after all these trailers, new snippets, everything, we really haven't gotten to see much of the menus or an extended gameplay featurette. But with just over six months until the game actually releases, I think we can expect that stuff to become fairly normal in the lead up to the actual launch. That being said, this is our first ever one. And it's in English, but I wanna say that this came from the Japanese Final Fantasy 16 site. Maybe there will be an English official post with the actual official English text, but that being said, this is actually a fan translation and Photoshop edit. This was all in Japanese and individual on Reddit, Dope Dame, whose link I will include in the description, um, actually did all of this work. They apologized for the bad Photoshop job. And uh, I don't think it's a bad Photoshop job at all. So don't apologize. Uh, be sure to go thank them in the comment section or in the in the comments of the Reddit thread. So just click on the Reddit link in the description and you should be good to go. But here we go. Let's analyze what do we have in front of us. So I made sure my camera isn't blocking any text or anything like that. It's just an open space in the bottom left. Right under me, optimal, reset, just a few basic things. We are looking at the ability tree section of what looks to be, I guess, an earlier section in the game because we have this one main tree and we have what looks to be if I'm not mistaken, the Garuda tree to the top right of that. We don't get any looks at like an Ifrit tree or anything like that, but what we have to assume is that you have Clive's main skill circle here. Who knows if it extends further or if it opens up new options, and we'll get into my, suspect, my suspicions for that a little bit later. But we also probably have the different icons around the outside of this. You can see Garuda just has a few basic ones up there, you know, 120 ability points, 575 ability points. And we can assume that Ifrit, Ramu, Bahamut, etc., etc., will all surround those. Now, whether or not those affect their skills while you're actually in those forms, as in when you're actually Transformer ever controlling those icons, or if they're just going to affect the skills you can use, which is the more likely thing, we can't really tell. All we can see for certain is that these rings the circles here in this initial ring and the number of rings around the skills in the Garuda tree are just different. They're just noticeably different. Those ones are, you know, two white lines and a darker line closer to the middle. And these are just, you know, the one line. We don't really know what the difference is between the two, but it might just be designating that those are for Garuda skills only and that these are general Clive skills overall. We can assume since I already pointed them out that the optimal button will just optimally spend your ability points on what the game has a predetermined notion of is like the correct thing. And reset would reset all of your points, one would assume. Uh, now, looking over at the bottom right, we have ability protection, zoom in and out, read more and close. So close, 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 uh, probably just closes the menu. I mean, that's pretty standard. Read more is just more information. I mean, that's pretty standard in most video games and RPGs just to get more information about the thing that you're currently hovering over. And that probably persists through like status equipment so you can look at stats and, and whatnot and effects that all that stuff has. Zoom in and out. I mean, that's just a basic menu option. And ability protection. Now, what I assume ability protection is, since you can reset all of your ability points, both, it looks like all of the points as well as just the individual skill based on the point reset button being square over on the right-hand side, is that by protecting an ability, when you reset all of your buttons, you probably don't reset the ability points for that skill. So it gives you a little bit of control over what things you are actually resetting, but you have multitudes, a multitude of ways of actually controlling that. So we don't know if that's what it does for certain, but that's what I would guess. Now, as for going back to the ring itself, we do get a bunch of different symbols and they seem to all have a certain vibe. We don't know if they're all skills necessarily, but the bottom half ones are a different color than the top half ones. So what I would initially assume is that those might be Ifrit or Phoenix related skills up top and those might be regular sword skills at the bottom. For example, we have Lunge over there, which seems to be the skill from uh, the second trailer, I believe. We saw, we see Lunge used a lot in the trailers. It's kind of like his standard, I guess, gap closer in a sense. Or it actually, uh, no, after stepping in it once the attack is released. Yeah, so we've seen that in quite a few trailers thus far. And, uh, but I guess we don't really know for certain the differences. What we can see is that Clive has a lot of those top skills unlocked. They don't have values associated with them, but he does have a couple. We have one at the top left for 300 and one just above lunge for 500. Interestingly enough though, 
it looks like all the other skills are like 20, 15, 10, 40, 25, and 30. So why are those ones so much less expensive? Well, I think the main reason is, is that you don't just get a skill once and you are done with it. It looks like you can choose to master the skill for a certain amount of ability points, which I assume puts it to its maximum potential, or at least increases its potential. Because that is a rough translation, so it's not the official translation of masterization, uh, we have to assume that that's at the very least a, a multi-step uh, feature to make the skill stronger and stronger as you go throughout the game. So if there's a skill you really like, you can continue to upgrade it. I would assume that over it being 200 points to max lunge to like all the way to max, but, you know, that's just based on what information we have right here. Uh, I do think it's just a matter of if the top skills are passives or if they're Ifrit and Phoenix skills or and if the bottom skills are just sword skills. I'm sure some of these are passives and not outright skills to be used, but we can't really tell for certain based on the symbols alone because, like, you have a downward swing one up there. You know what? If I looked at the old trailers, I could probably find skills that match these symbols. Almost certainly I can, but... Uh, it would be in the bottom right in the menu itself. And maybe I should give that a look a little bit later. If it, if I decide to tack that on at the end, may, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but we'll see. But yeah, you have like a downward swing. You have a downward swing with kind of like a scraggly line next to it. You have, you know, uh, this launching symbol to the top left. You have a slam down symbol in the bottom left, the one that's 15 points. You have an upward swing uh, at the south, south, west side. You have what looks to be like a target reticle. Uh, you have a fiery sword. You have a sword slamming down. And then you have what looks to be a launch to the left for 20 points. So these might all be active skills, uh, especially because lunges seems to be a forward slash. So if, if anything, maybe just one or two of them are a passive. Maybe the ones with the lines that are just facing different directions that are kind of hard to tell. Uh, but yeah, it looks like you'll be going through and just unlocking your skills. Pretty straightforward. Less of a tree and again, more of just making the choice to upgrade skills that you really want. And then again, with Garuda, it's kind of hard to tell. We can only get a clear view on two of them. And one kind of looks like a tree. Oh, it looks like a staff in a tree, the one in the middle. And the other one looks like some sort of alien Pokemon with a lot of rings. It's, it's a little hard to discern much information. Now, actually looking at the skill lunge itself, we can see that the skill has already been acquired. It is considered an offensive skill. So we know there will probably be offensive and then defensive and maybe support for the last one. But then it has properties underneath. It has a sword with half a star and, two, and a bunch of stars with a circle and half a star. This is undoubtedly going to be its damage value, its attack value in the stars, and then its stagger value and the one in the right. Uh, the game does have a stagger system, a la Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And so it makes sense that instead of saying things like, oh, significantly increased chance to stagger, just give it a star value so people know how strong it's actually going to be at dealing stagger damage to enemies where you need to. Now lunge, press X plus square on the ground after stepping in it once the attack is released. Uh, it just sounds like once you step forward, it'll release. Uh, again, might need to wait for an official translation on that one. We have the masterization for 200 points. Again, I think that just upgrades at one level and not all the way to max. And then the point reset, which would be just resetting the points for that skill in case you change your mind about what you were just using it on. Now, as for the rest of the elements, we do see kind of just standard menu stuff, world map, journal, item, status, equipment, ability, and system. What we actually get out of those individual menus, those we really need to figure out. But overall, we have a pretty good idea of what Clive's skill tree is going to be looking like and how it will expand as we go throughout the rest of the game. Curious to see how it ends up looking, how plentiful ability points are. Are they going to be as plentiful as, say, Final Fantasy 15? Or are they going to be a little bit more uh, tight on them as you level up, but you have free use and free respec ability, as seems to be evident based on the UI here? And then how are your equipment pieces going to affect your various stats, your stagger damage, your attack damage? We really need to get a look at those other menus to determine anything more than we see right here. Anyway, if I decide to go and find the ability images and see if I can locate them, then I'll add that right here. All right, so I did decide to go ahead and do this. So thank you, Past Haps, for talking to Future Haps and then claiming it was Past Haps. And we do have a few of these images. Uh, for one, we can see that the top left skill is Fire, the one at the very top left of the ability tree. Uh, that is the, I guess, the one with the this the symbol, and it kind of just pans out. Regular Attack doesn't have one here. That's not really a surprise. 
I don't think there's anything that's even adjacent to it. The closest thing might be the one that's right behind the word you learn in enhance abilities as well as enhance your feet, which by the way, it means it, may, it means your skills, not your actual feet. It means, I think it probably means F-E-A-T or uh, something. <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> I didn't even notice that before when I was looking at it because it was like right on top of the other skill. So I wasn't even paying attention at that point. Uh, let's see if we can get some of the other ones spamming fire. So here we have some of the, uh, I guess these would be the equivalents. Like we have Rising Flames and Scarlet Cyclone. So to answer the question about Garuda's skills up there, if we find a section with Garuda's later, we'll probably find those symbols. So we should uh, probably just play out. I'm trying to just skip through to all of the gameplay sections. So we can actually just see. Yeah, here's some more of those skills. The jump skill. Is jump skill represented anywhere? Yeah, the jump skill is. Look, it's the top right skill. I wonder if that just makes you jump higher or double jump or some sort of just jump thing. Oh, so actually we did have Garuda there on screen for a second. So it looks like we have Wicked Wheel and Gouge. Those don't look to be either of the skills that are there. So Garuda, those have got to be other Garuda skills that are, are listed. But it's the same kind of drawing. So we, I can assume that those are going to be skills that are actively affecting. And then we have upheaval and wind up. You know, those are those are pretty standard. Those are those are standard like the rest of them. Oh, we had a few flash by there for a second. Let me see. No, nope, stop. I'm going to go back to full screen. I don't need to see the OST. There we go. Uh, let me see if I can get a good image here. Yeah, this is just stone. So it looks like that's just magic. It's magic attack and jump. It's not even fire. That's just it just it's only it's only fire because of which tree it was actually on, but on the other trees it'll be another spell. Or you know what? Maybe it's just spell. Maybe it just levels up your spell ability regardless of which one it is. That also makes it cuz here it's blizzard again. It's all the same thing. And then swaps to fire, and I'm actually going too fast, so let me let me slow things down a little bit cuz we do have uh, some stuff I meant to go frame by frame, and instead I ended up going a little bit too fast. Uh, yeah, now we have dark, and then we go forward a little bit. And we got Heaven's Cloud and Gungnir. Again, nothing too surprising there. Then he just spams, just spamming Gungnir, it looks like. Oh, then we have that scene. Let me just hold forward here till we get to another one. Blizzard, yeah, Blizzard attack. Yeah, this is where we were before. <laughs> And then Thunderstorm and Pile Drive, which those, what's really interesting is that these are Ramus skills, one would assume. And uh, yeah, I remember there was a lot of discussion about those skills because he clearly uses Ramus staff in that section. And then you have Arrow, which is now on cooldown. You can see that running. I'm just trying to see if we have any of the other actions. Something, that I, something else I recognize is what I'm looking for more because he's trying to use Phoenix Shift right now to do this attack, but I kind of want a better look because I know we have other Phoenix skills that I'd like to see, and I could have swore they were in this trailer, but maybe they're in the other one. Maybe I need to do another extended look and see if I can see the other ones. Yeah, because we just have Scarlet Cyclone and the Phoenix, and I don't see those here. So I guess, well, unless the, the Phoenix is like off, oh, you know what? Phoenix is probably to the very top, like Garuda's top right. I assume right above this, it's just out of view, is probably the Phoenix one. Because as you can see, we just don't see these symbols anywhere. So these mostly seem to be affecting Clive's base skills, as we initially thought. Okay, I might maybe I grab the, the third trailer and see if there's anything else there real quick. All right, here we go. I went into the other trailer, and I did find it. That's called Rook's Gamble, it looks like. So if, uh, it, it flashes. Oh, Rook's Gambit. That's the skill. The other skill is not... Gouge, so gouge is one of the other two skills, but there we go. I also never noticed there's this little, they almost look like materia slots right next to it. Oh, you know what those are? Those are the different uh, skills. Yeah, they're looking because he has Phoenix, Ramu, and uh, Garuda equipped, and those look like, you know, they probably match the same colors of the skills. It's just letting you know which of the which of the actual skills you're going into right there. Okay, I wonder how that actually ends up working, because I never noticed that. But we do have it. There's Rook's Gambit. We did finally find the correct one, or at least one of the ones that matched so we could see if it was these skills. Then we do have Heat Wave and Rising Flames again for Phoenix. You know, we've already gone over those a bunch of times. Yeah, because now he's on the fire ones, and yeah, that's all it is. It's just letting you know which of the skills from the top left. So yeah, because it looks like you can change which ones are active in the top left, because right now he has her active. But the skill that you have, like Cold Snap or whatever, is not always reflective of that skill. 
because you can see, well, here it is, but we've seen in other trailers where it's like he'll be in Shiva form, but using Ramu's skills. So I have to assume these don't always line up in some capacity, but it's essentially allowing you to track your cooldowns is what it looks like it's doing. And I don't remember, I, if we just looked at the other one, I don't remember that being in the previous section. Yeah, just using the dodge. I don't think there's too much left at this point to analyze. Not from the, and I'm not going to look at the most recent one because we already have a million times. And to be frank, I could look at it a million more times, but we're not going to pull much out of the icon section of this, I don't think. And I don't think there's any more combat sections either. All right. Well, I'd say that that was a fruitful enough endeavor to throw in there to analyze the skill as we look at them all screaming around and attacking. There we go. Yeah, there's the gambit counter. So it looks like it's a counter because it's called a gambit counter. So it looks like that's the skill that they hit gambit counter times 12. And it is an iconic strike. So it looks like, ah, that's it right there. Hits Rook's gambit, gets thrown back. Because look, the damage, the red health there is missing from him. So this doesn't actually hit him. This is Rook's gambit triggering. And then immediately, literally just activated it quickly enough for that to then go for the counter here. So, yeah, that seems to be like a blocker or a counter of some kind. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Okay, I'm going to go back to the actual end of the first video I recorded. Let's go. If not, then this is the end of the video. I think I probably did it, but I don't know. Sometimes Haps does weird things. I can't speak for past Haps. I can only speak for current Haps. Anyway, with that, that's going to be a wrap for our video looking at the skill tree, the ability tree, I should say. Ability, sphere, circle, whatever you want to call it of Final Fantasy 16. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share, and stay tuned. We'll be covering all the new information as it comes out. In fact, I already have one other one I would like to record, and I'm sure many of you already know what it's going to be. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see all of you in the next one. And until then, take care.